Peter McGuire is here from XM, joining us live via Skype. Peter, what are you thinking of first as trade gets underway across the Asian region? Well, good morning, Nadine. Good morning, Andrew. I think first up, I'm looking at that US dollar index. I'm seeing if there's any movement there. That's something that I keep a very close eye on. And naturally, the weakness across those equity markets over the last matter of days, as you highlighted, Dow was spanked down another 2% on Friday. And you've got the short squeeze of multiple stocks and silver up 10% in the last three days, or about 12 or 13%, actually. So there's plenty to look at, Nadine. <laughs> yeah, OK. So, well, let, let's... Why don't we start with uh, what's going on around GameStop then, uh, how that is infecting the rest of the market. Uh, how, what's your take on that at the moment? Well, I think, Andrew, the first thing is, you know, the short squeeze and naturally the next thing is to, for many traders to get their mind around, can you actually be naked short? So in other words, you're shorting stocks that don't actually exist. Then there's the hedging mechanisms that really, um, I think, need to be understood from option prices and option um, strategies. And is it a collusion? I'm not suggesting that's the word to use, but it seems to be a groundswell among retail traders to take on the, uh, the hedge funds. So possibly it's a little bit of bite back, Andrew. All right. Um, so silver. Well, yeah. Oh, no, no, go on. No, yeah, okay. Well, obviously, silver. silver affected as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you said 13% higher. So what will be, you know, what will be the indications that we're looking for if we are to see this short squeeze really taking hold, as some, not all, are predicting? I think the first thing, Nadine, is you look at uh, precious metals as a safety mechanism, and that's what's been demonstrated with the price of silver. Silver was probably oversold, so it's been a big push up over the last matter of a week or two. And there could be further upside there. So there's the first side. Does it take Big Brother along and gold's possibly, you know, sitting on the sidelines? Um, I, I'd say there could be a little bit of move this in the next matter of days on that market, up another 20 or 30 possibly. And then I also look at that US dollar index. Is there a flight to safety because of equities getting sold off? So that's why I make a, I, I reference that point as far as US dollar as something that I keep a close eye on because currencies trade around about six trillion bucks a day and there's huge liquidity and naturally it's a market that retail traders and hedge funds um, navigate and participate in. Yeah, I mean, just as far as the US dollar is concerned, obviously we've had uh, a modest jobs rebound. So um, that's uh, given some support then to the dollar as well. And how's this playing out for the Aussie? Um, bearing in mind, of course, we've got a couple of issues to deal with this week, um, certainly as far as the uh, RBA uh, decision is concerned uh, tomorrow? Well, I'm not expecting any surprises, Andrew, from the RBA. So there's the first part, you know, and we're announcing those tomorrow. We've got the first central banks meeting this week, Aussie and the UK. Uh, UK is a different matter as far as negative rates, and there could be a push up there. If they don't, if they don't push on the negative rate, then you could see the pound uh, move to the upside against the US dollar. But as far as the Aussie, we're still at that 76.26 sort of number. I think you could see a 77 handle. Um, sometime this week. So there's possibly a move of 1% or more to the upside in the short to medium term. So we are obsessing with what's going on on a company level, in particular in the US with these short squeezes happening. But you've got to say that the overarching theme, what really matters is this whole vaccination rollout. And it's going pretty well if you look at the UK. They're miles sure. ahead of what's happening in many other parts of the world. So again, that vaccine narrative uh, that will remain key for for risk appetite going forward, won't it? No doubt. And I mean, as that moves forward, we've got our own concerns here as far as Australia, you know, and the economy and how it evolves uh, over the next two to three years due to, you know, with the vaccinations underway. So there's the first part as far as the Aussie. As far as the Eurozone is concerned, do we see another double dip as far as, um, you know, poor GDP numbers. I'm expecting those from the Eurozone this week, Nadine. So we could look at a double dip recession there. The next thing is, um, there's no doubt, are we going to see uh, a very strong uptake as far as US with uh, with the virus up, pardon me, the virus vaccine. So uh, yeah, it seems to be uh, an onward. There's plenty to talk about. There's plenty of um, uh, ground swells to push markets in either direction but at the moment um, yes vaccinations are a major concern but the other side of course is do we see a weakness as far as equities yeah uh, 
Pete, just uh, as far as uh, fiscal uh, measures are concerned in Australia, it appears as though the Prime Minister has put a cap on that. He said he's obviously going to uh, spend $1.9 as far as uh, rolling out the vaccine is concerned. But beyond that, no more. Well, that's right, Andrew. And then, you know, so how do we roll as far as um, third and fourth quarter this year? Uh, that's just a work in progress. And the other side, of course, is we aren't really doing that bad. I mean, you know, you, I'm in Sydney. You guys are in Sydney. No, I, I train at a gym and now the shopping centres, you don't wear masks. Uh, you, you're walking around. It doesn't seem to be a major concern like we're experiencing right now with a five day lockdown in Western Australia, which came in overnight. So, you know, there's the, the East Coast, as far as New South Wales is concerned, is relatively uh, in a pretty good space. And hopefully we see a real strong bounce back as far as job, job participation and economic growth. We will see and we'll get uh, an update in forecast from the RBA come Friday as well in the Statement of Monetary Policy. Peter, always a pleasure. Good to start the week with you. Have a good one. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, Andrew.